Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBeeFitness.com and on tap today, it's day 20 of the Weight Loss for Women Over 50 series and you guys, I have for us today a glorious walk and extended stretching session that we are going to be all standing. You don't need any equipment at all, but make sure that you do have something nearby. I have a chair. We're not going to sit in it, but either a wall, a couch, or something to hang on to for our stretching part. When you're ready for this one, I'm totally ready. Let's go! All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving. And that means that we are starting with our normal warm ups today of arm circles with high knees. And yes, I said normal because I really feel, honestly, at this point, you know, the thumbnail says day 20. I don't think that this is gonna be the first day that you've met me. If it is, hi, welcome. I'm super glad you're here. And honestly, honestly, you're pretty brave. Just clicking on day 20 and jumping in right now like you are. I'm super impressed by that. If you are new, this is what we do for our warm ups. You guys, you guys, <clears throat> first of all, I have a frog in my throat, but second of all, I'm really excited about today. I I'm excited for a couple of reasons. Number one, so, Every time that we do a workout, I write on my whiteboard all of the exercises, and it's the thing that I look at. I mean, I certainly do not try and memorize these workouts, in case you've ever wondered, a little bit behind the scenes there. So I have, you know, been writing down the title so that I can do that for my intro, and then I have the exercises and the things that we're gonna do. And let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. Watch out for whatever it is that you're gonna be balancing on later. I'm gonna scoot over here so I don't accidentally hit myself on my chair. But so today, today Today, the number started with the number two. It wasn't a single digit. It wasn't just double digits. We're on day 20. And that felt like such a momentous change, you know? And that's actually what I want to talk about today while we are walking about, about what this feels like 20 days in. 20 days is a big deal, my friends. Let's go ahead and do some welcome to my homes because I'm excited about getting started on our walk today. Today is, I'm not going to use the word just, but today is a walk without any other kinds of exercises interspersed. If you would like to, of course you can. It's why I'm doing a bit of a warm up here. In case you are walking around your house, in case you were going to do some marching, in case you want to do some kind of anything, as we have discussed numerous times, unless you're brand new here on day 20, you should always make the workouts work for you, my friend. And that means that we, well, I at least, am going to get started walking. So you guys, day 20. We are one day shy of being three whole weeks into this. And I know out there in the popular media that 21 days is allegedly how long it takes to create a habit. And I guess I used the word allegedly in that sentence because here's the thing about habits, specifically creating healthy habits, creating habits that are not necessarily organic and that really require some brain power, some willpower, some adjusting of your schedule, some adjusting of your mindset, some adjusting of your physical world. Perhaps you've created a space in your house where you can work out or you're waking up earlier or you are you know, setting some boundaries for other people can't disturb me for 20 minutes while I'm doing my workout. There are, there are adjustments that you have had to specifically and carefully make. Now we have habits all the time. I mean, we have, we have thousands of habits that we are not even remotely aware of. Things that we do that we just, you know, do that we don't think about. Unless of course we're trying to quit those habits. But when we are intentionally creating the new habit of working out, which may or may not be going along with new eating habits, new sleeping habits, new water drinking habits, new self-care habits, there are lots of habits that maybe we're trying to form right now. And I want you to know a couple of things that are really important about weight loss. Number one, truly, is that it doesn't get harder than this. This is, this is honestly like some of the best news that we could possibly have. It's got a, it's got a double-edged sword to it, but honestly, there is nothing about weight loss that gets more difficult 
than the things that we are already doing. Exercising moderately every day, eating the right number of calories every day, monitoring your water intake every day, getting enough sleep every day, thinking about your stress every day. I mean, as you've noticed in 20 days, it's not easy, but it's also not hard. You are physically capable of all of the things that we are doing. And it never gets more complicated than that. There aren't any more steps. You know, three months in, it's not like you suddenly have to do, oh, you know, five more things on your task list. No, nope, it's the same tasks every single day until you reach your weight loss goal. But that's also the hard part. You know, we, I'm gonna say as a society, I, I feel like we are in some manner somewhat hardwired for this to be constantly on the lookout for something that's new or different. There's a reason we get distracted by shiny objects. There's a reason we get distracted by something new coming into our lives. There's a reason why we get distracted by, you know, our phones or TV, you know, things that are bright and shiny and moving. It does get difficult to keep doing the same things. It gets boring. I'm going to say it. It gets boring to keep doing the same things. And it's kind of compounded by the fact that weight loss isn't very fast. You know, you could do the same thing for let's say 21 days and create these habits that is going to, you know, fix you. But, but beyond that, you know, sometimes we just want to, we want to mix things up. We want to do something different. And what happens is because we are used to being aware of something shiny, something different, something moving, something new and sparkly and different, we, we kind of get it in our heads that maybe we ought to do something different. Our brains are hardwired to solve problems. The problem though, is that sometimes we just give ourselves a problem. You could do the same thing every single day for years if you wanted to. And I'm thinking really specifically about some of the things that I do and have been doing every single day for years. Some of the habits that I have and really the thing that always comes to mind when I talk about this kind of thing is the fact that I play Candy Crush every day. I play on my phone every day and I have never had a problem with that habit. It, it just quite organically stays in my life very easily and I'm not bored with it yet. But habits that you're trying to create, habits that you're trying to do, habits that maybe don't feel organic or, well, no, I'm just going to go with organic yet. How do, we, how do we keep doing those when we're bored? How do we keep doing those when it's the same thing? And frankly, when there is so much in the media about different things you might be doing. There, I mean, you, you, cannot, you cannot be anywhere on the internet without having somebody giving you advice that sounds like, oh, maybe that'll be faster. Maybe that'll be better. Maybe that will work better for me. And the fact is, sometimes there might be something that works better. Sometimes, sometimes even I, even my excellent advice, doesn't work great for you. There are lots of different biological reasons why that might be so. There are lots of different environmental reasons why that might be so. But I'm going to tell you that if you are having success at all, stick with it. And I know, I know that even, even slow success doesn't necessarily feel like success, but losing weight at all all doing what you're doing means that you are successfully losing weight. So that's obviously the great news, but here's the other half of that. How do we stick with it when there are so many messages, when there is that kind of boredom factor, when there is what maybe feels like a motivation factor going on? My friends, there are ways to keep yourself 
doing something like this. And I've actually already hinted at it when I told you that I play Candy Crush every day quite happily, quite easily. When you enjoy what you're doing, it's very easy to stick with it. And that's what I'm gonna tell you that even, even my videos, even my program might not be the thing for you. Obviously, I hope it is. I mean, if you are 20 days in, I hope that you are enjoying our program. I hope that you are enjoying my message, that you have had lots of success with my methods. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you are brand new here on day 20, my goodness, you've come, you've come a long way in for me to just now be explaining some things. But if you don't know what my method is, if you open up the description box below, there is a link to go to my website and download. I have a 19 page information resource that explains everything that I know about losing weight. And it's, it's essentially what we've been talking about here, eating the right number of calories, exercising moderately, watching your stress, drinking water, sleeping, those sorts of things. It's very straightforward. It's very practical. It's very boring. <laughs> it's the same thing all the time. And my friends, if you're not enjoying yourself and not having success, I give you permission to look for something else. And I know that sounds so funny. I mean, it's, it's funny to me how sometimes we wait for permission from somebody else to make a decision that is entirely up to us. But I do, I give you permission if you are not enjoying yourself. Just because we are 20 days in, if you're not having fun, you're not gonna magically have created a habit that you're going to be able to stick with if it's not enjoyable for you. And as far as being motivated to stick with it, the thing that I have found in my own life, in addition to enjoying what I'm doing, is I really focus on my goal. I, I have very few things in my life, I mean, Candy Crush notwithstanding, but honestly, I have a goal as it relates to Candy Crush also. I, I have, well, at this point, it is kind of an impossible goal because I don't play as much as I used to. But when I used to play all the time, it was very important to me to be at the leaderboard, to be the number one position, to be farther along in the game than anybody else I knew on Facebook. <laughs> I am no longer even close to the number one player among my Facebook friends. But that was, that was my goal. That was important to me and it kept me in the habit of doing the thing that I enjoyed and still keeps me in the habit of doing the thing that I enjoy for years years that is that is the secret sauce my friend do something you enjoy and have a goal about it now, I know that weight loss in and of itself, it sounds like a goal. It sounds like, well, of course I have a goal. I want to lose weight. And I totally get that. But sometimes we're not super clear about that goal, about what we're going to do once we've lost weight. Because we get very caught up, we, all of us, get very caught up in what we're doing right now and how I have to eat the right number of calories and how I have to exercise every day. And that we don't spend a lot of time thinking about when we're done with this. Because at some point, truly, your goal is to be done with this. Not necessarily exercising, not necessarily watching what you eat, but to be done with the part where you have to focus on it so much. To be done with the part where it feels like work, where you are maybe a little bit worried about being able to stick with it. At some point, hopefully when you have actually lost all the weight that you want to lose, you get to be done with that. And you never, again, if we do this successfully, you never have to worry about it again. What are you going to do then? That, that my friends, is the goal. The goal is to not worry about your weight, not think about the habits, not worry about whether or not you're going to be motivated, but to do something with your goal weight body. What do you want to do? And I'm going to let you ponder that while we do a little bit of stretching because my friends, my friends, 
I'm very excited about this. I have a nice, ah, like truly a glorious stretch for us today. I'm gonna go ahead and like bring this down a notch. I didn't realize just how fast I was walking in there. So I'm actually gonna bring this down whew, a little bit first and catch my breath. You know, even when we are just, yes, that's heavy air quotes, walking, it's a great workout. We've talked about this. It's a great workout. It gets your heart rate up. It feels amazing. And so I'm gonna cool it down just a little bit before we do our stretches. Now the thing about the stretches that we're gonna do, and this is truly the first time we've really done this kind of stretching. I actually have static stretches for us today, which is very different than the dynamic or moving stretches that we normally do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my chair just so that I can stay kind of facing you. And I'm just gonna hang on to it for balance. Uh, again, you're here on day 20, you've seen my balance. It's not always amazing. So I have my hands on the chair and I'm gonna take whatever feels like a good step back for you. Making sure that all 10 of your toes are facing forward and your back foot, wherever it is, you can get your heel on the ground. The two things that are important about this is what I just said, making sure that all of your toes are facing forward. You will actually get a different stretch if your back foot is kicked out or kicked in too far. So actually look down and look at your toes and make sure that both feet are facing forward. If you need to move this back foot forward a little bit, move it wherever you can get your heel on the ground. For me, it's, what is that? A foot maybe apart. I mean, haha, <laughs> a foot apart. <laughs> but you might be incredibly more flexible than me wherever you can get to. We're, we're standing here. We've already actually stood here for a while, so I'm actually gonna switch feet. The thing about static stretching, Oh my gosh, and you might find that one foot, oh my gosh, I gotta move that forward. One leg might be significantly more tight than the other. For me, it's this one right here, my right leg. Ah, significantly more tight. So I had to move that forward. Adjust to whatever works for you. The thing about static stretching, we used to, when we were kids, do static stretching before we exercised. Do you remember that? When we would do it like a PE class, how we would like hold here and hold your quads up and, and do all that static stretching. The latest science indicates, and science changes all the time, just so you know, exercise science is constantly changing. The latest science indicates that static stretching before you exercise can be harmful to your muscles, can actually lead to some kinds of injuries. From here, I'm actually gonna take a big step back and I'm just gonna lean down into it. I'm actually, I'm gonna spread my feet just a little bit wider and I'm gonna lean down into it to wherever you can feel a really nice stretch on your shoulders and down into your lower back. If you can, relax your neck while keeping your back straight and feel that real nice stretch on your shoulders. If it feels like too much of a stretch, if at any point you don't like the way it feels, come on back up. Gravity is really helping you a lot on that one and it really could be too much of a stretch. Stretching should never be painful. Stretching should feel relaxing and gentle, just like everything else we're doing this month. I know that sometimes we get this feeling in our head like we have to stretch more. We need to be flexible now. Flexibility, again, with the science that is always changing. Flexibility is not proven to be critical to your health. It feels good. It may be an absolute goal for you, but it's not necessarily important to your health the way that other things are. Core strength, bone strength, bone density, those kinds of things. I'm gonna go ahead and walk this up. Whew, just a little bit, but not quite all the way. I'm actually still hanging onto my chair. I'm gonna spread my feet even wider. Feel that stretch on your inner and outer thigh, way wider. And I'm just gonna lean very, very slightly to one side. Now here's the thing, this is a lunge. I know you can feel that. That's why we're hanging onto the chair so that it's not too much work for your quads, but we're still doing really good lunge form. Hips are way back behind you. Your knee is not coming over your toe and you're only leaning until you can feel that stretch. Again, you might be, you might be down on the ground. I, I am nowhere near that. This is plenty of stretch on my inner thigh. And when we change sides, which we're going to do here in just a couple of seconds, I will probably be even up higher on my other side. My right side tends to be both stronger and less flexible. Sometimes those things go together. 
my left side tends to be, uh, frankly, uncoordinated and more flexible. I'm going to go ahead and switch sides gently, 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 wherever feels good to you. If at any point the stretch just doesn't feel good at all, don't do it. It's totally okay. Do a stretch that feels good. This again is very much assisted by gravity. So you can find yourself kind of sinking deeply into this a little bit too much if you're not cautious. Stretching is always a little bit of an element of strength too, which I can totally feel on my quad over here, but it's okay because we're actually going to stretch that up next. Go ahead and stand up, walk your feet in gently. Now this one might be super hard. Again, depends on how flexible you are. If you need to, you can grab a dish towel and wrap it around your foot. If you can grab your foot, you can also probably even grab your heel or your shoe, some kind of, some part of your foot or the bottom of your, your leg there. This is a quad stretch. On this one here, we're stretching the tops of our thighs up into our hip flexors here. This one is something that we don't do a lot of, but we do a lot of sitting that squeezes these muscles all the time. We're standing up super duper straight and tall. You might get a cramp in your hamstring. That's the back of your thighs while you're doing this. If so, release, let go, totally okay. Work on that Charlie horse, that's totally okay. The point of stretching is never, ever, ever to hurt yourself, ever, really. Really the point of exercise is to never hurt yourself. I feel like we've talked about that a fair amount this month. The point of exercise is to love yourself, my friend. And stretching, hopefully, feels like self-love. I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides. Ooh, and again, finding the just right stretch for me. Static stretching like this can actually be kind of uncomfortable if you don't do a lot of it. And I'll be honest, I don't do a lot of it. And that's something that I want to talk to you about. You know, again, the science is always changing, but there is a lot of information in the popular media about things that we have to do in order to be fit, things that we have to do in order to be healthy, things that we should be able to do if we want to call ourselves fit and healthy. And I want you to know if there are parts of those messages that you just can't make a habit, you can't make them enjoyable, you can't get motivated, you don't have a goal for it, let it go. It's okay. Speaking of let it go, I'm going to let go of my foot. We're going to do those arm openers like we do. Oh my gosh, open up your chest. Doesn't that feel amazing? Every time, every time. I just love this one. And then you better believe that we're going to give ourselves a big, big hug. My friends, nobody, nobody expects you to be perfect. Nobody expects you to do all the things all the time, every single time. Open up. You have probably placed a lot of those expectations on yourself though. We do that. Lots of us, me, me, I do that too. Give yourself a big hug. Let go of the things you don't want to do. Let go of the things that aren't enjoyable. Embrace yourself and embrace the things that you enjoy. Embrace the things that you love. Cling to them. Keep them in your life. Keep doing the things that you like. And if you like stretching, I have more. I say this every single day. I have more. I will, in fact, link here on screen if you are watching on either your computer or your phone. I'm not sure if it shows up on TV, but I do have a longer stretch that is lovely for a day like today. I also, on the other side of the screen, I'm going to have all 31 videos as soon as there are 31. There are only 20 right now, <laughs> but when there are 31, they will all be in one place for you to come back to again and again and again and again. I've been asked a couple times whether or not these videos are going to disappear on February 1st, and they are absolutely not. If I am on YouTube, these videos are on YouTube. My friends, down on the bottom of the screen is the letter P, which is an invitation to go over to Patreon, where a monthly pledge from you can help me make free workouts for all of us. And thank you so much for that. On the other side of the screen is me. It's a picture of me <laughs> and it's a subscribe button. Make sure that you click that and the bell notification so that YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video, which this month is every single day. You guys, thank you so much. This was nice today. I needed it too. Make sure that you subscribe and I will see you tomorrow.